Shalom, all praises unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Kodash, double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the hopeful elect Akim that teaching this word. Shalom Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Kodash. Now this is a, a quick video here, and pretty much, you know, um, you know, they they're saying here in Sudan, warring factions agree to a seven day ceasefire because as we know in Sudan right now. There's a war, war taking place between, you know, what they say, what the Edomite media says is like the rebel factions and the government army, basically. And, and uh, pretty much, you know, they're putting it in the Western media or the British media that, you know, America's evacuating the, sit, the British citizens and no, England's evacuating British citizens, America's evacuating American citizens and they're like Sudanese. So they're evacuating these Sudanese citizens you know, that are British or that are American, back to America, away from the war, right? You know, so that, you know, Esau painting himself out pretty much as the good guy. But I'm going to play this clip here. But, you know, we know that this is a proxy war. And we know that basically, you know, it's Esau that funds the wars, basically. That's the point I wanted to make here. Yeah? Because any war in the world that takes place, you know, in this current world we're in, Esau backs it. Now, the deep, one of the things I saw, the deeper thing behind this war over there in uh, Ukraine, um, Sudan right now is that one side's backed by Russia. I believe it's like what the Western media calls the rebel faction are backed by Russia and the other side are backed by America. So, so, so it's for the interests of either Russia or America why this is taking place. Because I believe Russia, Russia have Sudan agreed to deal with Russia where Russia can build, I believe that there's a base they will build in and around the areas of Sudan, basically. And the um, Americans are not happy with this. So they've, you know, basically uh, kicked off, kicked off a, a, a proxy war there, basically, between the factions. So, but the majority of the media, the, the um, Goyim or the people wouldn't know that. They think it's just... Um, uh, the animals across the world fighting and, you know, the, the, the West have to come and clean it up. No, it's caused by either Russia or by America, all right? Why? Because the, the, the deeper thing is that Russia and America later on down the line will lock horns, but what they do in between that is they, they use their lesser countries that they have influences in, all right? So let me play this clip here and I'm going to read some scriptures, but it's all biblical prophecy anyway. It's all prophecy. I mean, them countries, are like Sudan's already pretty much destroyed anyway. They've been having wars over the years, you know. But it's like everything, everything, um, you know, that the so-called white man, his influence around the world is destruction, man. All right. For his own gain, he destroys the lives of, of you know, so-called innocent people, beginning with Israel, beginning with Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. Esau will do anything for his own gain, basically. To, to further his agendas. And if that means slaughtering masses of people, that's what he will do. I mean that's the point. I mean they're factions, they're warring, but it's for the be it's for it's on behalf of Russia. One side represents Russia, you know, and the other side represents America, basically. So they're fighting for the 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 Edomite. Basically, the Edomites are fighting for influence over over the world. Basically, that's what it is. That's really what it boils down to. The East want to rule, which is the Russians. And the West want to keep their power, which is who? The force of the West is America. Babylon the Great, man. But it's all biblical prophecy that these things are happening. So I'm going to read this here. Matthew 24 and 3. Read the scripture here. It says, And he, 
And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So this is what the disciples asked our Lord, Yehawashai, all right? They asked him these things when the Lord was there with them before he was taken, you know, before he went back to the spirit world, they were asking him these things. Look, Lord, when, are, when is the sign of your second coming? When are you going to return? All right. And it says, and it says, and of the end of the world. All right. And of the end of what world? The end of this current age we're in. The end of the wickedness, basically. The end of the so-called white man's reign. The end of a wicked um, reign, man. All right. Part of this, and part of Esau's wicked reign is just constant wars, bloodshed in the planet. All right, deception. When, when are you coming back, Lord? When is this going to end? This is what they were, the disciples were asking. And we asked the same things, but we know through the prophecy, we're close to his return. So I'll continue reading here. And Yahushai answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the anointed, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumours of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And this is what we're hearing. This is what we're seeing now. Right now, as we speak, there's a war taking place in Ru uh, Ukraine right now. All right, the Crimea between Russia and the, the Western backed forces, the Ukrainian forces that are backed by the West, the NATO and the EU, basically. There's a war taking place for the Crimea. The Russians want that land back. That's a war. That's an actual war happening. Sudan right now, you've got the reb, so-called rebel forces and the, the forces of the government going up against each other, all right, which is all influenced by Russia and America. So that's the wars and rumours of wars right now. That's, that's actually not even a rumour, that's wars right now, all right? And things are happening all over the world, man, you know. Um, uh, you know, there's tensions brewing up between uh, countries all over the planet, all right, old you know, uh, wounds of wars from the past is coming back from different uh, countries, you know. You know, um, uh, you see China's getting more fed up with America, you know. Uh, 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 Russia's getting fed up with America. So all these things are happening, man. And, and don't be deceived. When you see Esau on the TV um, evacuating British citizens from Sudan, you know, they make it look like Hollywood, like they're doing some, uh, something good when it's them causing it, me and their governments, their elites, their politics that causes all this. All right? So this is what the Lord said. It said, it said and Yahweh shall answer and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the anointed and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumours of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So yeah, the end ain't yet, but we know it's part of prophecy that these things are happening, these wars around the world, these rumours of wars, these skirmishes that are happening. It's part of biblical prophecy, but we know the end ain't yet, because what did, why we know the end ain't yet? Because the Lord said, you know, the, the mark has to be released. Things have to happen in, on earth before the end comes, but the wars are part of it. And we know one of the main thing is that mark, the MOTB, when Esau is going to crash um, the economy, basically. Pretty soon the economy will be crashed. And then the way you got to function is with that thing in your hand, basically. All right. See, so it says, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And that's been happening. Earthquakes have been taking place in diverse places. All right. The pestilences, are, you know, are out here like the, the you know, the, the, the viruses and things like that. You know, there's things in the air, man, out here. People be getting sick recently. You know, you got you had that sea thing. All these things are happening, man. But more's gonna come, and it says and famines, yeah, because famines are gonna take place too. Meaning there's gonna be a lack of bread real soon too on the uh, all over the world. I mean, that's already happening in so-called third world countries. You know, the the poor in the third world countries, they've been living like that with a lack of bread. But that's going to come to this Western society, to Britain, to America, to Europe. All right. And pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. All right. And that's what's going to happen. All these things are the beginning of sorrows, meaning pain, basically, man. The beginning of anguishes, man. What, is the, what did the Lord... 
um, referred to America as? He referred to America as what? The virgin daughter of Babylon, man. And why was it referred to as a virgin? Because America hasn't been touched by war, all right? On its shores, but it's going to be. It's going to be touched with famine. It's going to be touched with war. You know, all kind of hell's going to break loose in America. And by default, you know, Britain, Britain and America go hand in hand. The Western world, Germany goes at hand in hand with America, the Western Europe, because they're all aligned with Babylon. All right. So it says, it says, all these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And that's happening now. All right. Well, well, it's going to happen ultimately when, you know, some bro some brothers are going to be taken by these you know, these troops or whatever, taken to camps and, and you know, they're going to try and force us with the MO thing, the guillotines. All these things are going to take place, all right? But it said, and you shall be hated of all nations for my namesake. And why are, we, why are these things happening in the world? And why are these things going to happen particularly to the Akim that believe for the name of Yahweh Shai's sake? And even ultimately, why is these things, these wars and rumors of wars and all these things taking place anyway? It's Yahweh Shai causing it. Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, to fulfill prophecy so that he may return, man. So these are like them, them, them birth pains. All right? So let me read this here. But you, you know that even when I was seeing this throughout the week, um, pretty much the whole thing that's taking place in the Sudan right now, you know that, you know, you know it's Esau, man. You see these wars and rumors of wars, and in, the, in your mind you'd be like, you know that that's Esau causing all that, man. Is Esau causing all that, man? All right? All the wars in the planet, man. It's Esau causing it, man. You know, the, 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 the Israeli government, the American government, the British government, the German government. It's all these Edomite governments causing war on the planet, man. That's, that's their nature. So this is Psalms 55 and 20. And then who suffers? The people suffer, man. Beginning with Israel, the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. We suffer, and then the heathen nations, they suffer. Everyone suffers, man, in these countries, which in a lot of those countries like Sudan and whatnot, you got a lot of jakes over there too. and You, you know they're suffering over there, man. So this is Psalms 55 and 20. It says, He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. So, and yeah, but that's really referring to Esau with... Our people with the tribes in particular, like going into the history of like the North American Indians, they were at peace with Esau. But I'm reading this to, because there's a part in it, obviously, we know of the nature of Esau, basically. So the Velasi's thing, he puts forth his hand against such as be at peace with him. He have broken his covenant. The words of his mouth are smoother than butter, but war is in his heart. Yeah, his words are smoother than butter. And his news, we're going to Sudan to evacuate the British citizens. We're going to... Um, uh, try and stabilize the country, but it's them that's causing it. The words of their mouth is smoother than butter, man. That's why ninety percent of the stuff we see in their media, their Western BBC media and whatnot, we know it's ninety percent BS, man. That is them in them lands causing it. Their governments are making these skirmishes take place. They fund the web. They fund these different groups with weapons to kill each other. All right, they fund them with bombs and tanks. All right. So the words of their mouth is smoother than butter, man. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, meaning Esau, the so-called white man. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war is in his heart. His words are softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. And that's the spirit of the so-called white man, all right? He talks peace, but he's really about war. Everything that's taking place on the planet regarding to do with war, because that's how the Lord created Esau, man. And everything to do in the planet regarding to, uh, you know, wars and you know, different rebel factions fighting each other in all these different third world countries. It's the Edomite governments behind it, man. All right. They're the powers that be. But it's all prophecy. It's all, it's all, you know, it's all going to come out anyway, man. It's, it's, it has to happen before the Lord returns. Because we know that, you know, World War Three pretty much has to take place. And these are, these are, these are all build ups to it. The mark has to be released. The economy has to crash. But these are all build ups. All right. To bring sorrows on the world, man. So this is Habakkuk 2 and 1. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and I will watch to see what he will say unto me and, I, and, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables 
that he may run that read of it. All right, and the vision, what does the vision what is the vision? The vision is the prophecies, basically. Alright? For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. That's the prophecies, man. World War Three, the mark. It says the vision is yet for an appointed time. Yeah, they're all in their set time, man. The, um, that things must take place. But guess what? We know things are going to happen. How? Because we measure things with the scriptures. The scriptures, how you measure things. Okay, there's skirmishes taking place. Okay, I know that's Matthew 24. Things like that. When they, when they start talking about the crashing of the economy, you know that's Revelation 16. The, I believe that's Revelation 16. That's right, the mark. You know things are getting close to the return of the Lord through what's taking place on earth. So for the vision is yet for an appointed time, by the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, yeah, meaning it will come quickly, basically. Before you know it, hey, what did the Lord say? You know, in Romans, he said, you know, our salvation is nearer than when we believe. So before we know it, we'll be out of here, man, basically. We know we're close. And, and you know, the Lord's speeding up time because it's like, uh, pretty much this year is almost done already. This 2023 is nearly almost done. A few more months is finished. So it says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. And the, that's talking about us Israelites. We live by faith. But it says the soul is not upright in him. That's the so-called white man, man. All right? That's why the earth's getting more demonic, man. The earth's just more demonic because the, these devils, these Edomite elites, they're just fully, you know, fully coming out with it. That they're Satan worshippers, man. They're just, you know, they're fully oppressing the planet. It's just, it's just fully coming out, man. And you can see it in society, the demons, the, 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 the things that are accepted in this kingdom. All right, it's all coming out, man. So that's the soul of the so-called white man. They're not up an upright people, man. They're about bloodshed. They're about destruction. All right? But it says, but the just shall live by his faith. That's talking about the hopeful elect brothers that believe, all right? So it says, yea, also, because he transgresseth by wine. That's the so-called white man's philosophies. He's a proud man. Yeah, he's democracy. We're coming in the name of peace. You just got to believe our way of life, you know? Bring, implement this in your society. Then every country becomes you know, fucked up with the influence of these devils. Democracy. Yea, also, because he transgresseth by his wine, he's a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. Yeah, he gathers unto him all nations, and heaps unto him all people. You know, he can't be satisfied. He's in everyone else's land. He knows he's, he's controlling what's happening in Sudan. He's controlling what's happening in Taiwan, in Hong Kong. He's in everyone else's land, man. Causing problems, causing rifts between the actual people themselves. You know, the actual, uh, uh, the, 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 the heathens that live in those lands, instead of leaving them to their own ways to take care of themselves, so to speak, he's there, which, you know, in the kingdom, we're going to be over the heathens. And for a period of time, a thousand years in the kingdom, then the other nations, they're going to serve us. But then after that thousand years, the other nations outside of Esau, we're going to let them basically go in, in back into their lands, basically live, you know, you know, uh, you know, live under their, you know, basically we're going to govern them by the law, but they're going to be able to do their thing, wear their clothes, wear their garments. They're going to be able to do what they got to do as their own people, but they're just going to be under us. All right. Whereas Esau, he has that control over the nations, but what does he do? He causes war and tensions and problems in their lands. All right? Mischief. So it says, it says, Yea, also, because he's, he transgresseth by his wine, he's a proud man, neither keepeth at home. He's everywhere, the so-called white man. He's military, he's everywhere. He's influenced. Who enlargeth his desire as hell and is as death and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. All right. And that's what that's what it is, basically. All right. That's the point. Esau's in everyone else's lands. We know that everything that takes place in the world, all these skirmishes, all these wars, these people die. And it's the influence of these Edomite nations, man, primarily America, which is Babylon the Great, man. 
All right, but we know that this is all prophecy leading up to the end anyway. So we just got to, Lord willing, keep staying in the fight, you know, because we know the end is near. So, you know, with that, I'm going to say, you know, all praises unto Yahweh, Barshem, Yahweh Shai, double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalawam to the hopeful elect Akim that teaching this word. Shalawam, Yahweh, Barshem, Yahweh Shai, Barshem, Rukha Kodash. Shalawam, Shalawam.